I have no explanation for what I'm doing here other than I've been reading a lot of queer books and have to talk about them. What else is new? All I do is read, cry, and talk about books that make me cry. The theme for my reading in September has been make me care and then ruin my life. That's also the theme for everyone I've dated. The first book that I have read recently is The Bridge by Bill Konigsberg. I didn't even know this was going to be queer when I picked it up, even though Bill Konigsberg is known almost exclusively as a queer writer. He's very well known for his book Openly Straight, this one that you've probably seen. Last year I read his book The Music of What Happens and absolutely loved it, but this book, The Bridge, I truly believe is his best work yet. It follows two teenagers, Tilly and Aaron, and at the start of the book, they are both at the George Washington Bridge in New York about to jump. They've both been dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts, and so they just happen to be at the bridge at the same time. The book splits into four different timelines. The first one, Tilly jumps, and then the next one where Aaron jumps, and the next one where they both jump, and then the final one where neither of them jumps. That in itself is almost all you have to say about this book. I mean, you get to know both of them separately and then see them both survive. But what I wasn't expecting is for the most powerful section to be that third section where they both jump. And I don't want to ruin it by saying what happens, but it's not what I thought would happen at all, where we just like see both of their families upset. That would have been powerful, but this book tore me apart. There's queerness present because Aaron is gay also. All of the characters are spot on. And also, look at this gorgeous cover. You can't go wrong with some clouds. The next book I've read in September is Surrender Your Sons by Adam Sass. I read this in ARC form right before it came out. Whew. This is an intense read. It's basically Boy Erased meets Lost conversion therapy on an island. At the beginning, the main character, Connor Major, gets kidnapped. His mom is in on it and he is taken to an island for conversion therapy. And much of this book is about him and other campers at Nightlight, which is what they call it, trying to escape. I expected this book to touch on a lot of themes of conversion therapy and be like on the sadder side, but it was actually kind of the opposite where it was way more action adventure like heart racing action the whole time, nonstop. I never wanted to put this down after a chapter. Like I thought I would have a harder time with the subject matter, but just the action of the story kept me moving. Connor's character was great and everyone else on the island has a really interesting backstory and there's a whole thing that is uncovered. I don't know that I've ever read a debut novel this good. I am going to be reading everything that Adam Sass writes ever now. This book just came out in September, so if you haven't picked it up yet... <sighs> okay, this next book is less explicitly queer. It just, it is to me, and so I'm gonna talk about it here. That is Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. This is another debut novel. It's an adult novel, and I haven't seen a ton of people talking about it, but it's very short less than 200 pages, which is surprising. And it follows this pregnant 18 year old who has a job delivering pizzas and basically becomes obsessed with this lady that she delivers pizzas to and they develop a friendship and it's so bizarre. It's literary character driven, shelved with adult for good reason. One of those where you don't know the protagonist's name, which I'm a fan of when that happens for good reason, and I think it does. You know when you're reading a book and you're just so caught up in the writing style and you just want to live inside this author's mind for weeks and weeks? That was this book with me, except I didn't get to do that because I read it so quickly because it's so short. But if it were any longer, it would be even weirder, and I don't know if I could handle that. It's one of those books for me that just like, it sits with you and time goes on and you're like, did I actually read that? Like, did that happen? I could actually see it very much as a movie, but like a Sundance movie. <laughs> Next up, okay, I just finished this book. I've talked about it in another video, but now that I've actually read it, I just have to like recommend with my entire heart, You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I hadn't realized how mildly disconnected from YA I had sort of started to become until I read this and was like, whoa, this is a YA classic waiting to happen. It's already happening because this was freaking Reese's Book Club's first YA pick Ever. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've heard about this book and you know that you should be reading it. It's a fantastic audiobook also. You will read it in 0.5 seconds. It's a prom 
rom drum com the main character liz lighty such a fun name is running to be prom queen so that she can afford the scholarship it takes place in indiana it's very like midwest heart but deals with queerness being black living in a small town such an impressive debut novel i can't wait to read everything else that Leah Johnson writes also. And I'm also so proud of the editor Maya Marlette because she was my boss at Scholastic when I interned there and it's freaking Reese's Book Club. Pfft. Next up on my queer reading lists are Cemetery Boys, Felix Ever After. I just picked up Less by Andrew Sean Greer because I felt like it was time. I love it for so many reasons and I feel like I'm going to need to make another video to talk about it. I'm only a chapter in, but that's like 40 pages. So I get it and uh, I'm not ready. Leave me a comment and let me know what you've been reading. I hope your fall is off to a good start. Are you reading the new releases? Are you sticking with classics? Are you still in your quarantine reading slump? If you're interested in keeping up, feel free to add or follow me on Goodreads. Also, I will leave the link to that and all the social medias below. Have a good one.